The Sports Buzz is brought to you by the Milford National Bank and Trust Company. With surcharge free ATM access at more than 2,500 ATM machines statewide as part of the SUM program. Hour number one of the Sports Bus continues here on First Class Radio as presented by the Milford National Bank and Trust Company. You can bank online at milfordnational.com. We are, of course, broadcasting live from our New England Fat Loss. Dot com studios. Matt Romling alongside Craig D'Alessandro. And joining us now on the phone lines, he's the head coach of the Milford Scott Hawks boys basketball team. Paul Seaver joins us on the Sports Buzz. Coach Seaver, how are you today? Uh, I'm doing all right. How are you guys? We're hanging in there. A happy holiday season to you and your family. And uh, we'll dive right into it with you. Uh, talk a little bit about last night's game. And uh, I know you're talking to Craig uh, before coming on. Uh, maybe uh, raising the voice or using the voice a lot during the game last night, as you will uh, be doing throughout the season, I'm sure. Uh, as a coach, that's just uh, part of the territory, right? Losing the voice a little bit. Yeah, I lose, I'm, I'm my voice still a little disappointed, but um, you know, last night was a tough one for us. Um, second half really was uh, the maker, but you know, all of Rams is a good team. They're well coached. Um, there's a reason they're dubbed the preseason uh, league favorite. Um, we, we, we hung with them throughout the second quarter where it was a seven point game at halftime. Uh, we had all the momentum, you know, this, it was, it was a great crowd, a great environment. A lot of people came out. We did a youth night as well. Um, but you know, they, they just kind of, you know, made their move in the second half and, you know, it's a good team. You know, it, it's, it's, there's not much else other than that. Uh, they have, you know, Ryan Carney is their top guy at 32 on Tuesday. Uh, we did a fantastic job on them last night. We held them to 12. Um, but, you know, like all good teams, other guys stepped up for them. I think all five of their starters were in double digits. They just had a, a bounced attack. And, um, you know, the second half, you know, they really, you know, kind of flexed their muscle. Um, but, you know, I, I got a, I got a good group of guys. I got a resilient group of guys. You know, we'll bounce back and practice tomorrow. You know, we're getting ready for King Phillip on Monday. What what was it? you kind of just just talked about it a little bit and you know keeping it uh, close by in that first half and then and then doing a good job on their primary score sounds like you did those things so that was kind of your plan going in to try to do those two things and and then see what you could do in the second half. Yeah, pretty pretty much we um, you know Brian Carney is is their guy. He's been a Hockamock League All Star uh, for the last two years. He'll probably be another one uh, this year as a senior. And, you know, he scored 32 on Tuesday, and, you know, our philosophy going into the game was, um, you know, if they're going to beat us, they need other guys to do so. And, you know, Brian Kibbe and Alex Croto, two of my senior captains, um, you know, had the assignment of guarding him, and they did a terrific job on him. He was he was taken out of the game. He, he had 12 points, but obviously, you know, he's a, a, a scorer who's used to scoring in the 20s um, at least. And... You know, Oliver is a good team. You know, they're, they're, that's why they're in the position that they're in. They have other guys step up, and um, you know, it was a seven-point game at halftime. And you know, we had three possessions on offense where we could have cut into the lead. We got, I think, three or four consecutive stops to start the third quarter. Um, you know, a couple of those shots fall. Maybe things are different in the second half. Uh, but you know, sometimes that's the way the ball rolls, and. You know, we just got to focus on, you know, bouncing back. You know, even even against Hopetail last Friday, you know, Hopetail's a good team. They they won a district title for a good reason last year. And, and um, you know, they're talented. They have good ex- experience in chemistry. And, you know, that game and, and last night against OA, who's very similar, um, you know, those are good early season tests for us. You know, we have five first-time starters, ten first-time varsity players. Um, you know, these are the tests early in the season that, you know, give us the experience that hopefully we can learn from and build off of and, and continue to move forward. Um, you know, Tuesday night's game, obviously getting a win was um, something that I think not just the team needed, but the program needed. Um, it was one of those feel-good nights, and, you know, it, it, it put us in a position. And, you know, like I said, you know, through three games, we've, we've played two teams um, who can make or are capable of making deep tournament runs at the end of the season. And, you know, would we like another win or two? Sure, but at the same time, you know, it, these are good experiences that we need to go through so we can take the next step over the course of the next, you know, couple weeks moving forward. Coach, how how excited was your team, you know, the 
their first Friday night, well, I guess second, but at home anyway, you know, the first yep. Friday night game of the season. When you're a basketball player, Friday night's kind of a big deal. You know, game yep. night, everyone's paying attention throughout the season. You remember uh, as a player as well. And uh, Were you happy, though, last night that you you know got Tuesday out of the way, that you got that first home game as the head coach of uh, the Milford Scott Hawks out of your system and out of, you just said, your young team system? And then, of course, uh, having the first Friday night home game of the year last night. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, Tuesday night was um, incredible. Even for a Tuesday night, we had a great atmosphere. And obviously it was an exciting, thrilling game, an exciting ending as well. Um, you know, getting that win was important. You know, it had been almost a year since the Bill program had won one. And, you know, getting it out of the way early on in the season, especially at home, especially in our home opener, you know, it was a big boost for these kids. And, you know, obviously, like you said, leading into, you know, our first Friday night home game, you, you can't beat it. And, you know, we had a great crowd last night. We, like I said, we did a youth, a youth night as well. A lot of the younger kids in, in, uh, town came out. Um, it was great to see some of them. And, you know, obviously it's, it was a tough matchup for us. And, you know, obviously we wish, you know, some things went a little bit better. Uh, but, you know, like I said, we, we had a terrific second quarter. We had all the momentum in the gym going into halftime and, you know, they're a good team. They just they just kind of beat us to the punch after the break, and um, you know it's it, it's it's sometimes that's what you got to deal with when you know you're playing a team with you know expectations of a league title. And um, from a, from an uh, atmosphere standpoint, you know it's 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 what we need. Um, you know it's one Friday night home game. We have others obviously down the line in the season, and you know we just got to continue to you know use those experience, learn from those experience, and you know make the next Friday night home game. You know. Um, even more special, you know. That's the goal. It's you know every every day in practice we have you know a simple motto. We we just want to improve every single day, and you know we're we're not settled or satisfied with you know where we are now. It's it's a work in progress, and you know it always will be a work in progress. And we just need to continue to get better. And you know we don't want to be the team that we are now a month from now. You know we want to be sure. a much better basketball team, and you know it's. You know, going back to the Friday night home games, there are there are others that are on the schedule. You know, I want to go back to Tuesday just for a moment and kind of close the book on on the first full week. But uh, going back to that North Attleboro game, uh, how impressed were you uh, with your young sophomore? He took a, a a pretty bad hit. It sounds like a uh, little sore. Gets up, knocks down those free throws anyways to give you guys the win. Uh, how excited were you for Nate and and uh, that effort? And certainly, uh, you know, if you didn't already know. T- told you a lot about that sophomore no oh, absolutely um i mean like like i said it was it was a feel-good night not just for the varsity team but for like how the program as a whole and you know i mean they played incredible you know when to win basketball games especially you know at this level and in the hockamock league uh more so you know you need guys to step up and you know on tuesday night nate nate was the guy who stepped up but you know like we talked about you know in practice on wednesday and thursday and you know, Nate would be the first to acknowledge it. You know, it was a team effort. You know, um, in that fourth quarter, we outscored them by 10 points. And, you know, Zach Tamani, who's also a sophomore, hit a big three. Uh, Alex Masick, who's also a sophomore, hit a big jump shot. Um, you know, Brian Pibby and Sean Arcolano also hit big threes in the fourth quarter. And, you know, it was a win by one. And, um, you know, Nate was the guy who really propelled us, um, you know, to victory. But, uh, you know, it's, we got uh, a number of, um, big baskets from a number of different guys just throughout the game. You win a game by one point, you know, it, it comes down to the game-winning free throw, but we don't win that game without our, our, our consistent contributions throughout. I mean, even, you know, Dimitri Torres came off the bench. She had a three at the end of the first and the, another one at the beginning of the second, and, you know, it, it, those matter. You know, even though it, it's not the game winner, so to speak, you know, those matter. Dwight Anderson, he had he had a double double on Tuesday, eleven points and twelve rebounds. I mean, it was a it was a collective team effort. Um, but you know, from from Nate's perspective, just a sophomore. Um, obviously, we we know his potential. Uh, but I mean, he stepped up and had a game, and and you know, he'll have a memory that he won't ever forget, even though he's still got three years of basketball in front of him. And you know, it, it shows a lot about him as a player and, and more so as a person to step up as, as a sophomore in, in that type of situation, you know, down by one, no time on the clock, and hit two out of three free throws. Um, you know, it's, it's just impressive. 
Coach, looking ahead uh, to the Hawk Mock League schedule, you mentioned King Philip up next, and then, of course, uh, the Barry Hutchinson tournament in Bellingham, which is just such a great tournament uh, I know to be involved in, just be, you know, for many reasons because of the teams that show up, but also yep. uh, for the memory of Coach Hutchinson, who was just a, a tremendous, such a nice guy and a very yep. good basketball coach. Uh, that's what's coming up next. And then as you get deeper into January, how do you look at uh, looking ahead on your schedule? You know, I think uh, it going, going back to what I said about our first three games, you know, playing um, a team like Hopedale who won a district title last year and brought everybody back, you know, playing a team like Oliver Ames last night who uh, could very well win the league championship this year. You know, looking looking ahead, I think we're going into a stretch where, you know, we have a number of games that are, are you know, up for grabs from our perspective, and that's why I think it was important to, you know, go through this first week and a half of our, our game schedule and, you know, continue to improve, continue to learn from our experiences, continue to, you know, understand what we need to do to win basketball games. And, you know, King Phillips is a good team. They're an improved team. Um, we got to go on the road. It's going to be a tough game on Monday. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's one where, you know, if we show up and we execute, um, you know, hopefully we can get a win and get ourselves back to 500. Um, you know, looking ahead at the, at the Bellingham tournament, I know Milford has uh, played in it um, uh, uh, over the last couple of years. And, you know, we played Dedham first next Saturday, and, you know, Dedham's a good team. I mean, um, you know, Dedham beat Milford last year in, in the tournament. Um, and, you know, they're well coached. They got a good group. And, you know, it, it's just another situation, you know, we have to be on our A game. I, I don't think there's an easy game on our schedule, and that's a good thing, you know. Um, but, you know, moving forward, obviously, once we get through the holiday season, uh, league play really kicks in. And, and you know, the Hockamock League is tough. It's 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 a, it's a great league, and I'm, I'm I'm thrilled that Milford is a part of it now. And you know, it, it tests us every single night. You know, it, it it shows. You know, there's no easy wins in the Hockamock. You know, we got we got to come ready to play every single game. And you know, it, going back to what I said about you know, kind of our team motto, improving every single day. We know we need to improve every single day if we want to get wins in this league. And you know, it's 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 just about staying the course and continuing to be that work in progress and continuing to, you know, take a step forward, whether it's on a game night or in uh, in practice, whatever it may be. Uh, Coach, of course, uh, in the midst of, of your first season at the helm, and I, I want to ask you going back uh, before we, we begin to wrap it up with you, you know, when I was sitting in the stands calling the games uh, back when you played – you know, I had no idea I was watching the next Milford Scott Hawks basketball coach on the floor. Did you think that at all? Did you think that uh, someday you'd be, you know, when you're looking over to Coach Manguso, the jacket's <laughs> flying off, he's all upset, the crowd's going crazy, you're out there just trying to play. Uh, did you think you'd, you'd be that guy at some point um, down the road? What did you think? You know, definitely when I was a player, I, I you know, I definitely did not envision you know, being the coach at Milford. Right. I mean, can you imagine um, someone walked up to you when you were playing and said, you're going to take over for Coach Manguso one day. What would you have said to them? I, I probably would have said they're crazy. <laughs> coach Manguso will coach forever. Right. Um, you know, that's probably what my response would have been. But, you know, I I, I grew up in, in the Milford culture, in the Milford environment, and, you know, my father being a coach too, I, I knew coaching was something that I always wanted to do and get into. And, you know, sometimes, you know, the, the way the – the ball just rolls, and, and I'm, I'm, I couldn't be any more happier that I found my way back home. And you know, like you said, yeah, we're in the midst of our first season, but you know, I, I I've had the advantages of growing up and and, and playing in the, the youth program in town, and obviously at the high school level for Coach Manguso. And you know, I look at a lot of the guys that I don't just have in my program now, but the youth kids as well. Uh, I saw a number of them last night, and, you know, just looking ahead, I know the future in Milford from a basketball perspective is bright. Um, and, you know, it's I, I look back at my, you know, memories and, and, and the advantages I had playing basketball in this town, and, you know, I, I look at some of these kids, like I said, not just in my program, but in the, in the youth program as well. And, you know, that's what I want to give to them, and, you know, we'll, we'll get there. Um, it's it's there's, there's no doubt about it. There, there's enough hype there's enough you know talent there's enough good kids and hard workers in this town to you know continue this program the way it should be and and has been for the last three decades you know all right coach before we uh let you go let us uh give us an update on how things are going with the wally siever foundation of course you had uh the basketball tournament again always uh, a big success how are things uh 
going with the uh, Wally Seaver Foundation lately, of course, in memory of your, of your uh, late great dad, who was uh, a local coach for many, many years, who, of course, you followed in his uh, footsteps as well. How are things going with that and the fight against ALS? It's, uh, it's going great. Uh, we're, tonight, actually, we're having our ALS uh, holiday uh, dinner benefit at the Woken Club um, from 7 to 12 tonight. Um, you know, we, we do this dinner benefit in uh, coordination with a youth travel tournament that we run that we'll be running during February vacation week. Um, you know, the proceeds from the dinner and the tournament, which we started last year, this is the second year we've done both of them. Um, you know, they go to fill uh, my father's two scholarships down at the Milford Youth Center, um, and the rest obviously goes to ALS Research. Um, and, you know, once once we get to the off season in the summertime, we will continue um, our, our high school tournament. Um, next summer will be the fourth year we'll, that we will run that. And, you know, we're three for three so far in, in the past summers in terms of growing and expanding our field. We were um, just about at, I think it was 37 teams last, last summer. <laughs> and, you know, hopefully we can get that over 40 next year. But, uh, you know, same thing. It's, it's just, you know, my, my father was a big basketball guy. You know, it's, it's an opportunity over the last couple of years for us to, you know, raise money for, you know, the disease and, and, you know, keep my father's memory intact. And, you know, the combination between that and, and you know, basketball and with the, whether it's a youth tournament or a high school tournament, it's, it's a good fit. So things are, things continue to go well and, you know, we'll continue to fight the disease. Well, it's just amazing to watch your family do what, to you and your family, watch, watching how you guys do what you're doing with all of this. And, and that yes. basketball tournament, Coach, just... I can't even imagine what it must feel like to, you know, to, to get that call from a team. Hey, we're coming up to play. We're going to do this. And, and the amount of teams yep. that come up participate in that thing. I just, it's, oh, yes, uh, it, it's it, mind boggling. It's, it's incredible. I mean, the, it, last summer we had teams from, uh, four different states who came and, you know, it's, 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 it's your basic off season high school basketball tournament. You know, kids show up. They, they're, they're, play good competition they get a good weekend run in and during their off season uh but you know just the um involvement is has been incredible and it continues to grow and you know that's that's our goal you know just continue to expand things and you know continue to do things the right way obviously it, it helps when we get more teams because we raise more money obviously but um you know it's just great to see teams not just coming from the area but coming literally from all over new england it's fantastic What's that website again, Coach, for for the Wally Seaver Foundation? Um, it's just wallyhsinvitational.blogspot.com. Thanks so much, Coach, and good luck on uh, Tuesday or Monday, rather, against uh, King Philip. And uh, good luck going forward. And uh, would love to talk to you again during the season. Absolutely. Thank you, guys, for having me. On. All right. Thanks so much for all your time, Coach, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too.